Hey, hey, fourth graders. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing super well and are positive and staying strong doing our stay at home phase. Um, so anyways, today, um, I, I feel like you guys are getting the hang of how to do homework and how to turn it in. And so hopefully you guys are working hard. I hope you are and, and doing your best because remember that during this time, it's like it's kind of become like a self-learning process, right? And and so I'm sometimes not able to be there, but get your questions ready. So when we meet for our online class or virtual class once a week, um, I can answer those questions for you. I can kind of go over them because maybe the question you have is someone else's question as well. So anyways, um, today we're going to be reading chapter eight, which is titled Easter. And, and we have a very different challenge this week. So we'll go ahead and cover it. Um, so here we go. We have Bridge to Derevithia, Chapter 8. Hopefully you guys are following along with me and continue reading. All right. Chapter 8, Easter. Even though it was nearly Easter, there were still very few nights that it was warm enough to leave Miss Bessie out. And then there was the rain. All March it poured, and for the first time in many years, that creek bed just held water. Not just a trickle either, enough so that they, when they swung across, it was a little scary. It was a little scary looking down at, um, at the rushing water below. And so Jazz took Prince Tarion across inside his jacket that the puppy was growing so fast he might pop the zipper anytime and fall into the water and just drown. Ellie and Brenda were already fighting about what they were going to wear to church. Since Mama got mad at the preacher three years back, Easter was the only time in the year that the errands went to church. And it was a big deal. His mother always cried, poor. But she put a lot of thought, as much money as she could to scrape together, into making sure that she wouldn't be embarrassed by how her family looked. But the day before she planned to take them all over to the Millsburg Plaza, for new clothes, his dad came from Washington early. He'd been laid off. No new clothes this year. Okay, so we're looking at the time of Easter, and it looks like uh, Jesse's family really takes uh, Easter seriously, right? And many of us during uh, normal times, we usually dress up during Easter, and it's for sure a day that, that we enjoy going to church, and we definitely... Uh, like to be active participants. So same here, right? We get to see how Jesse's family is really into it. But unfortunately, Jesse's dad just announced that he lost his job. So this is new. Everything is just new. And so unfortunately, they will not be uh, buying new clothes or new dresses or whatever. And so I, I can identify that I remember that when I was young, the biggest thing that we would do is make sure that we all had a very pretty dress that day. So just like maybe Christmas time and maybe Thanksgiving, uh, it's a special day that we like to wear and our, our finest, our finest wear for Sundays. So, um, so something that you could kind of connect to as well. All right, here we go, guys. Let's continue on. A wail went up from Ellie and Brenda, like two sirens going to a fire. You ain't making me go to church, Brenda said. I ain't got nothing wear, and you know it. That's because you're too fat, Maybell muttered. <gasps> Did you hear what she said, Mama? I'm going to kill that kid. Brenda, will you shut your mouth? His mother said sharply, then more warily. We got a lot more than Easter clothes to worry about. His dad got up noisily and poured himself a cup of black coffee in a pot on the pack of the stove. Why can't 
don't we just charge some things? Ellie said in her wheeling voice. Right? So what do you think it means when it says um, words like muttered and wheedling? So if I look at the word muttered, would you tell out loud that your sister's too fat? Right? So if it says you're, it's just because someone is yelling, I ain't got nothing to wear and you know it. And then someone says, y just because you're fat, Maybell muttered. So what is a mutter? Right? So many of you guys probably already know the answer. Yeah, it's like when you're kind of like mumbling, right? You're like speaking softly. You're trying not to really, people, you don't really want people to hear you, right? So that's like the time when you're maybe really upset at your parents and then they kind of like leave and then you think they're not hearing and you mutter something. That's that situation, okay? So it sounds like these girls are being really, really annoying, right? And maybe most of us would probably be like a little concerned about dad or, or our situation, but they're really concerned about, hmm, we're not going to look good for Easter. But in reality, uh, Jesse's dad just lost their job. So it, it is a very scary thing, right? All right, let's continue. Okay, Brenda's bursting. Do you know what some people do? They charge something and they wear it. And then they take it back and say that it didn't fit or something. The stores don't give them no trouble. The father turned in a kind of roar. I never heard of such a foolish thing in my life. Didn't you hear your mother tell you to shut your mouth, girl? Brenda stopped talking, but she popped her gum as loudly as she could just to prove she wasn't going to be put down. Jess was glad to escape just to the shed and the complacent company of Miss Bessie. There was a knock. Jess? Leslie, come on in. Okay. She looked first and then sat on the floor near her near his stool. So what's new? Lord, just don't ask. He tugged the teats rhythmically, listening to the plink, plink, plink in the bottom of the pail. So what do we call that when we're doing those sounds? Plink, plink, plink. Obviously, he's milking his cow, right? But what do we call that? That figurative language that says plink, plink, or kaboom, or crash. That's right. We call that onomatopoeia. Okay, so here, this book is using a lot of onomatopoeias to describe the sound. Okay. Man, that bad, huh? Yeah, my dad's got laid off, and like Brenda and Ellie are fit to fry because they can't have new clothes for like Easter. Gee, I'm sorry. About your dad, I mean. Just grin. Yeah, I ain't too worried about these girls. If I know them, they'll trick new clothes out of somebody. It would make you throw up to see how these girls make a spectacle of themselves in church. Oh. I never knew you went to church. Uh, just like Easter, he concentrated on the warm udders. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I guess, I guess you kind of think that's dumb or something. <laughs> she didn't answer for a minute. I was thinking, I'd like to go. He stopped milking. You know, I don't understand you, Leslie, sometimes. Well, I've never been to church before. It would be like a whole new experience for me. He went back to work. Ah, you'd hate it. Why? Because it's boring. Well, I'd just like to see it for myself. Do you think your parents would let me go with you? Well, you can't wear pants. Well, I've got some dresses, Jess Aarons. Would wonders never cease? <laughs> Here, he said, open your mouth. Why? Just 
stuff in your mouth. For once she obeyed. He sent a stream of warm milk straight into it. <sighs> Jess Aarons! The name was garbled and the milk dribbled down her chin as she spoke. Don't open your mouth now. You're wasting like good milk. Leslie started to giggle, choking and coughing. <laughs> now, if I could just learn to pitch a baseball, that's straight. Let me try again. Leslie controlled her giggle, closed her eyes, and solemnly opened her mouth. But now Jess was giggling so that he couldn't keep his hands steady. Ah! You dunce! You got me in the ear! Leslie hunched up her shoulder and rubbed her ear with the sleeve of her sweatshirt. She collapsed into giggles again. <laughs> I'd be obliged if you finish milking and, on, and, and come on back to the house. His dad was standing right there at the door. I guess I'd better go, said Leslie quietly, and she got up and went to the door. Excuse me, his dad moved aside to let her pass. Jess waited for him to say something more, but he just stood there for a few minutes and then turned and went out, right? So what can you infer about their relationship, right? Doesn't it seem like you're just kind of goofing off with your best friend, right? Have you ever laughed to the point that you feel like you can't breathe? Have you ever laughed to the point that like even your stomach feels like tension and pressure, right? That's that's like a lot of funny, right? So that's the kind of relationship they have going on right now, okay? Something to note for yourself. Continuing on. Ellie said she would go to church if mama would let her wear the see-through blouse. And Brenda would go if she at least got a new skirt. In the end, everyone got something new except Jess and his dad. Neither of them really cared. But Jess got the idea it might give him a little bargaining power with his mother. Since I ain't getting anything new, could Leslie go to church with us? Right. So it's a little shocking because um, maybe, uh, you know, and this is in real life, right? Maybe some of us are not active participants at church. And then, you know, people, they go to church a lot more often, right? And so some people find that a little weird or a little different. And that's the situation with Leslie. Leslie has never in her whole life gone to church. And so she has curiosity and she wants to go with him to church, right? So he, he already knows that there's some tension, right? His mother uh, is not a big fan of the young little girl. And so he feels that if he doesn't ask for anything, then he can ask for Leslie to join him at church. Here we go. Let's see what happens. That girl. He said he could see his mother rooting around her head for a good reason to say no. She don't dress right. Mama. His voice sounded as prissy as Ellie's. Leslie's got dresses. She's got hundreds of them. Mother's thin face drooped. She bit the outside of her bottom lip in a way Joyce Ann sometimes did, and then spoke so softly Jess could hardly hear her. I don't want no one poking up their nose at my family. Jess wanted to put his arm around her in the way he put around Maybelle when she was in the need of comfort. She don't poke up, she don't poke her nose at, at you, Mama. Honest. His mother sighed. Well, if she'll look decent. So we kind of come, I want you to notice that her mom's comment is this. I don't want her poking up their nose at my family. So you really have to know what that means. What does that mean when someone's poking their nose? Does that mean they're like poking their nose, right? No, I don't think so, right? So that one is also kind of like, a meaning behind it, right? It's kind of like a, a, a like a saying that people say, right? When someone is poking their nose at something, it means that they're getting into business that is not theirs, or maybe they're judging them, right? So 
the reason we know a little bit now of why the mother feels that way towards her is she feels that, you know, because Leslie, remember that Leslie has a lot of money, that perhaps, you know, uh, people that have lots of money, money might be judging people who don't have so much. So that was really the, the, the reason behind that tension that she felt. And so kind of Jesse just feels a little bad for his mom thinking that, and he does reassure her that that's not the case, that, that, that Leslie's a little different. So let's continue on to see what happens. Leslie looked decent. Her hair was kind of like slicked down and she wore like a navy blue jumper over a blouse with tiny old fashioned looking flowers. At the bottom of her red knee socks were a pair of shiny brown leather shoes that Jess had never seen before as Leslie always just wore sneakers like the rest of the kids in Clark Creek. Even her manner was decent. Her usual sparkle was toned way down. And she said, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, to his mother, just as though she were aware of Mrs. Aaron's dread of disrespect. Jess knew how hard Leslie must be trying, but Leslie didn't say, ma'am, naturally. In comparison to like Leslie, Brenda, Ellie, look like a pair of peacocks with fake tail feathers. They both insisted on riding in the front of the pickup with their parents, which was some kind of a squeeze with Brenda's shape to consider, right? So we know for a fact that Brenda's a little, a little on the hefty side, right? That she still wants to ride in, her, in the front with her parents. Jess and Leslie and the little girls climbed happily into the back and sat down on the old sacks his dad had put against the cab. The sun wasn't exactly shining, but it was the first day in so long that the rain wasn't actually coming down, that they sang, Oh Lord, what a morning, ah lovely meadows, and sing, sing a song that Miss Edmonds had taught them, and even like jingle bells for Joyce Sam. The wind carried their voices away from them. Jingle bells, jingle bells. And it made the music seem a little mysterious, which filled Jess with a feeling of power over the hills rolling out from behind the truck. And the ride was much too short, especially for Joyce Ann, who began to cry because the arrival interrupted the first verse of Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which after jingle bells, was her favorite song. Jess tickled her to get her giggling again. <laughs> so that when the four of them clambered down over the tailgate, they were flush-faced and happy once more. They were a little late, which didn't bother Ellie and Brenda, for it meant they got to flounce the entire length of the aisle to the first pew, making sure that every single eye in the church was on them in every expression of every eye, a jealous one. Lord, they were disgusting. And his mother had been scared Leslie might embarrass her. Right? So they made it to church, but they're running late. So let's continue. Jess hunched his shoulders and slunk into the pew after the string of women folks and just before his dad. Church always seemed the same. Jess could tune it out the same way he tuned out school. With his body standing up and sitting down in unison with the rest of the congregation, but his mind numb and floating, not really thinking or dreaming, but at least free. Once or twice he was aware of being on his feet with the loud, not really tuneful singing all around him. At the edge of his consciousness, he could hear Leslie singing along and drowsily wondered, why she'd bother. The preacher had one of those tricky voices. It would buzz along for several minutes quite comfortably. Then BAM! He was screaming at you. I... Each time Jess would jump, it would take another couple of minutes to relax again. 
right? How many of you guys can relate to that, right? Have you ever been to a church service where um, the sermon that is given, right? He might be just talking about, you know, heaven is something that is expecting us. But you gotta be good, right? And so that's that's kind of like what, what we're talking about, right? Just having that jump that's like kind of like, whoa, is, is he yelling at us? What's going on, right? I think we could all relate to that, right? Sometimes your your pastor or your um, preacher or um, your priest, right, might be a little a little startling at, at first, right? So each time just would jump and take um, and it would take another couple of minutes to relax again. Because he was listening to the words, the man's red face with sweat pouting down seemed strangely out of doll in the sanctuary. It was like Brenda throwing a tantrum over Joy Sant touching her lipstick. It took a while to get Ellie and Brenda pulled from um, pulled away from the front yard of the church. Jess and Leslie went ahead and put the little girls in the back and settled down to wait. Gee, I'm really glad I came. Jess turned to Leslie in unbelief. It was like better than a movie. Can you imagine, right? Finding that excitement at church, finding that it's better than a movie. Wow, that must have been really shocking for him, right? You're kidding. No, I'm not. And she wasn't. He could tell by her face. That whole Jesus thing is really interesting, isn't it? What? What do you mean? All those people wanting to kill them when he hadn't done anything to hurt them? She hesitated. It's really kind of beautiful story, like like Abraham Lincoln or or like Socrates or like Aslan. It ain't beautiful. Maybell broke in. It's scary nailing holes right through somebody's hand. Mabel's right. Jess reached down in the deepest pit of his mind. It's because we're all vile like sinners. God made Jesus die. Do you think that's true? He was shocked. Seen the Bible, Leslie? She looked at him as if she was going to argue. Then something seemed to change her mind. It's crazy, isn't it? She took her head. You have to believe it, but you hate it. I don't have to believe it, and I think it's, like, beautiful. She shook her head again. Just crazy. Mabel had her eyes all squinched as though Leslie was some strange creature in the zoo. You've got to believe it, Leslie. It's in the Bible. Wh why? It was a genuine question. Leslie wasn't being smarty. Well, because if you don't believe in the Bible, Maybelle's eyes were huge. God, God, God will damn you to hell when you die. Where did she ever hear a thing like that? Leslie turned on Jess as though she were about to accuse him of some wrong he had committed against his sister. What? He felt hot and caught by her voice and words. He dropped his gaze to the gunny sack and began to fiddle in the raveled edge. That's right, ain't it, Jess? Mabel's shrill voice demanded. Don't God damn you to hell if you don't believe in the Bible? Jess pushed her hair out of her face. I reckon, he muttered. I don't believe it, Leslie said. I don't even think you've read the Bible. I've read most of it, Jess said, still fingering the sack. So about that, the only book we've got around in our place. He looked up at Leslie and half friend. She smiled. Okay, she said. But I still don't think God goes around damning people to hell. They smiled at each other, trying to ignore Maybelle's anxious little voice. But Leslie, she insisted, what if you die? What's going to happen if you die? Right? Wow. 
wow, so this chapter was very deep, right? And I think it kind of might be a little bit um, common for us to hear those conversations sometimes, right? Some some people who, who believe in a higher power and other people that believe in other things, right? So um, for your challenge for this week, that was the end of the chapters. It was really, really good, right? And you wonder what made uh, Leslie go to church, especially because, you know, her family is really into like science and politics and the arts, right? And and the contrast, Jesse's family is very humble, and um, so they're not as financially stable, and they're more of the church-going type, right? So for this challenge, it's going to be a little bit different. And so this challenge is going to be about faith, okay? So for today's challenge, um, you are going to, you could either draw it or you can just show me uh, a symbol where you put your faith. Now that can be a symbol, maybe your dad is a firefighter. And so you put like the symbol for firefighter. And then you talk to me a little bit about why do you put your faith in that, right? So we can talk about that and just make it personal. Um, so we're, uh, we're just gonna kind of just respect each other. So if you wanna talk about what you put your faith in, right? What is something that you put your faith in? And so you can do a symbol of some sort, you can draw it or you can show me the symbol and uh, you can just talk about a little bit about your faith in that higher being or power or maybe someone special in your life and why that symbol represents the faith that you have, okay? So you can do something like that if you want and you don't have to do it, it's just for extra credit and you're more than welcome to share. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time for chapter nine. Have a good one. Bye. Hugs, guys.